This is a very brief overview of constitutionalism, a theme that is central to our course in political legal sociology. Human rights generally refers to the universal applicability of ethical or moral principles and generally speaking, calls into question the anthropological relativity that is part of social science and the value neutrality, both of which are at the heart of social sciences. In contemporary societies, nonetheless, human rights has come to refer to those civil rights that are embedded in legal systems, and as we have or are discovering, not all constitutions are alike. This week, the readings will direct you to some broad comparative themes that differentiate constitutions from one country to another or one type of nation, nation state to another. The article by Judith Blau identifies milestones in the creation of documents designed to protect human rights. She contrasts the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the 1948 Declaration from the United States, with the United States Bill of Rights. The latter, that is the U.S. Bill of Rights, doesn't affirm individual rights, but rather denies the state the power to abridge these. Thus, the U.S. Bill of Rights affirms the limitations of state power. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, by contrast, represents a dramatic shift. The key contrast that Blau points out, the Bill of Rights spells out precise rights of individuals. Underlying this is a tension between individuals and the states, and thus the, the model views the individual as resting freedoms from the control of a state apparatus. It has assumptions about independent and autonomous citizens. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, by contrast, posits synergies, embeddedness, goodwill, and trust among communities of individuals. And thus, it posits a set of interrelated rights that apply to all human beings who are existing and living their lives in socially, culturally, and economic interconnected settings and situations. The article by Saeed Argument is much more dense, much more complex, much more difficult. You should do the best you can with the article by Saeed Argument called Constitutions and the Struggle for Political Order. Here, Argument views constitution making as part of the rational human attempt to lay down the normative and legal foundations of the political order. So in the first part of the article, he largely analyzes, describes and analyzes the transformation of the medieval Christendom state to the more formal, legal, rational, and normative form of political order. And so there are two parts to the constitution-making process for Argeman. The formation of the constitution, that is the emergence of a constitution from a, a, a body politic of individuals, and then the transmission of that 
constitution or the idea of constitution and especially or as a central feature or point of the argument article is that the the newer nation states that is nation states that were formed uh, later than for example the united states or france or england those constitutions to a certain extent borrow ideas from the initial constitution making states or the initial uh, democratic republics. The transplantation of the political legal tradition of constitutionalism requires a political reconstruction of the state through a rational design. And the emergence of that constitutional process and the transition itself generally produces conflict. So in the West, constitutionalism and the limitations on government were formulated around the idea of the natural rights of the individual uh, as civil liberties. The fundamental of notions of human rights were extended, but human reason was viewed or is viewed as the source of legitimacy for positive law. Thus, we call this sort of the rational bureaucratic order using Weber's terms, founded in the communication and coming to agreement in a textual form through human reason on the part of human beings. And these constitutions in the West typically have a separation of legislative, executive, and judiciary powers at their core or at their heart. The process results in the institution of public authority in a, what Weber would have called, a rational bureaucratic state. And political authority, authority is then the bureaucratic, rational bureaucratic administration of the affairs of the state. In the classical era of that is these First Nation states, the classical era written constitutions have as their starting and first principle democracy. These differ from later constitutions, which Argyman refers to as ideological constitutions. In this latter category, and these are later constitutions and later constitutions that borrow the idea of a constitution without borrowing the principle of the constitution. And so what Argument argues is that this is a political reconstruction following along the lines of ideology rather than having as its centerpiece the rights of individuals. He gives us an example, the Soviet Constitution of 1918, which resulted in a transformation of society, but it was a constitution without constitutionalism, that is, a constitution of written text that is an ideological justification of power and its implementation without the participation of those who will be governed by the resulting constitution. In the next section, Arjuman talks about the political reconstruction and constitutional politics in the Islamic world and in Japan. And I, I want to say in advance that this is extremely complex material. Uh, and I'm, my goal here is to provide some highlights that will help you navigate through the article. You won't get it the first time you read it. Here he contrasts modernization in the Islamic world with Japan. There are many complex ideas and key ideas in all of the details in the pages that follow. I'm here going to focus initially on Turkey 
Pakistan and Algeria, which you will find described in rich and vivid detail in the article. So Turkey had its first constitution on April 20th, constitution of April 20th, 2014. The page number in, uh, in Ar the Argument article is 60, and you might want to follow rather closely in your reading of that article. Through this constitution, a grand national assembly assumed authority over Sharia law. The Republican Constitution of 1924 was amended twice. In eight, April of uh, 1928, it disestablished Islam as the religion, official religion of the Turkish state as stated in the Constitution. And in February of 1937, it established six ideological principles to create, in quotes, an ideological constitution. The fourth and last principles were designed to legitimate a very strong executive branch of power and then to remove limitations to its exercise of power. The Constitution of Pakistan of 1956 contrasts sharply with Turkey in that it assigns a new role to Islam. The framers of the Pakistan Constitution wanted Islam included in the transcendental principles of the political order. The tradition of the Sharia jurist had never endowed its community of believers with the sovereignty, which was the case with Christendom in the West, and this results in a whole new idea of uh, the Constitution, or contrasting idea of the Constitution in, for example, Pakistan. A as you look through constitutions or individual constitutions, you will see that in a number of predominantly or countries in which the majority of the population is Muslim, that this uh, Islam is specifically mentioned in the preamble to the Constitution and is embedded as part of the Constitution, which makes it different for example, than many of the Western constitutions. The Algerian constitution is one that is especially interesting. Uh, the Algerian constitution of 1963, it combines a lot of the ideas that Arjuman discusses as he develops his thesis of the ideological const constitution. First, it was an instrument of social transformation Islam was declared the religion of the state. And in this particular constitution, the party, this, the political party, the National Liberation Front, reflected the profound aspirations of the masses as part of its revolutionary principle, but it replaced the nation as the principal party in the constitutional text. So. I think that this is among the most interesting, fascinating, deep, and complex material in the course. Uh, you have this with the Constitution Finder and an exercise that you will work on until April 21st. But I think that just looking at several constitutions and their preambles will help you navigate through uh, the reading material.